Let me show you a cool Lightroom trick with which we can create buttery smooth backgrounds using a bit of masking. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And as always, I will be showing the whole editing process. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. And now let's begin. All right, you can already spot a lot of noise. And since we're going to apply some heavy editing, the first thing we want to do is to apply some denoising. So let's go ahead, open up the details panel and click on denoise. This will nicely clean up the noise and this will also help already kind of smoothing out the background, reducing the graininess of the image before. Next up, we want to crop this image because we want to bring some more attention to our subject right here in the center. So let's do that. And of course, we also want to remove some of these distracting objects to get a cleaner looking image. So let's open up the remove tool and choose the remove mode and make sure to use generative AI. Then I'm just going to brush over a few of those tree branches like this one right here and this one at the bottom. Once this is done, let's click on remove. And instantly this image looks much better. Now with the boring stuff out of the way, we can start with the cool part. So let's open up the basic panel and right away, because I want this image to be super colorful, I'm going to choose the Adobe Landscape Profile because this will bring up the base saturation a bit. And it will also kind of help with the darkest parts as this profile makes it a little bit brighter. Still looking at histogram, you can see it's super, super dark. We even have a little bit of clipping in the very darkest parts of the image, but we can fix it quite easily. So first off, let's bring up the exposure, introducing a lot more brightness. So that's much better already, but we can do some more. Of course, we can bring up the shadows, which will specifically target the darker areas of the image and make them brighter. I'm also going to bring up the blacks, which will kind of do the same thing. And I do think I even want to bring up the whites. So doing this, the histogram does look much better. We have a much broader image to work with. Now we can think about the white balance and what we want to do with this image. Looking at our subject, you can see a very, very clear blue color cast, which I actually don't want for this shot at the moment. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, getting rid of that. So something like this is looking much, much better. I'm also going to bring down the tint because we do have a bit too much magenta in this image. So reducing the tint will help balance this. Okay, that's looking much better already. Next up, let me bring up the vibrance to boost the color some more. And I'm going to bring up the texture for a little more sharpness. At the same time, I want to have a very nice glowing look on this image. So I'm going to drop the clarity a bit. This will also help with the background because at the moment, again, you can see a little bit of noise being introduced due to these heavy adjustments. So as I bring down the clarity, we can kind of smoothen it out a bit. Okay, I also want to bring down the dehaze. Again, this will help with the glow. And that's it for the basic adjustment. So let's compare to before and you can see a huge difference. Thanks to the basic adjustments, but also thanks to AI denoise. One thing that's really bothering me is the background. And we're going to target the background in the next step with a bit of masking, making it a lot smoother. So let me show you how that's done. Go ahead, open up the masking panel. And let's start with something simple. Usually for these kind of shots, I want the bottom part to be a lot darker with a kind of different color. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm covering pretty much the whole image like this. Since I don't want the subject to change, I'm going to subject an objects mask. Make sure to use the rectangle select mode for better results. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that bird. This did work quite well, but the bird's feet are still selected. So I'm going to subtract another objects mask, just draw a rectangle around those feet. And let's have, subtract one more for the other side. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to start to make the background darker in that area. I'm going to bring down the exposure first. I'm going to be stacking multiple different masks on top of each other to get a more natural result so we don't need to overdo it with dropping the exposure within the first mask. But what I'm going to do as well is to drop the highlights all the way and I'm also going to drop the shadows all the way. This way we are only targeting the brighter areas of the background so we're not risking any clipping in those areas. As I said I also want to change the color of the background so 
right here in the darker areas, I'm, I actually want to have a blue color cast. That's the reason for me to bring down the temperature. So let's drop it quite a bit. This also helps to make this whole image look a lot more colorful. And let me also bring down the tint. I do want this area to be more on the green side than on the purple side. Okay. And let me bring up the saturation. Now we did change the background, but we didn't make it smooth yet. Now comes the fun part. What we can do to smoothen out the background is to use texture. But of course, we're not going to add texture, but we're going to drop it. And this will help dramatically in making the background smoother. So let me just bring it down a lot like this. Of course, if you're working with finer details like the bird's feathers, you still need to be careful because the mask around the finer details here isn't perfect. If you bring down the texture too much, this will be obvious. Now, another thing we can do, we could use negative clarity, but in this case, I feel like it's a doing a little bit too much. So I'm not going to go too crazy here. But instead, we can go down into our details panel right here and we can drop the sharpness. So let's go with something like this. And now let me deactivate this mask so you can see the difference from before. You can see at that point the background is rather grainy and has lots of details to after. That's looking much better already. But of course, if we are stacking different masks on top of each other, we can further improve this effect. So let's continue. I'm going to use another linear gradient for the very bottom part. This time I don't want to really affect the subject like this. And again, I'm going to drop the exposure first because I want to make this area at the very bottom even darker. And I'm going to drop the texture. And let's drop the sharpness to make the very bottom part smoother. Okay, that's looking nice already. I also want to use a linear gradient and make it come in from the right side like this. Of course, again, I don't want to affect the subject. So let's subject a objects mask and let's draw a rectangle around the subject. Once more, I'm going to bring down the exposure and making the background darker like this will just help to make the subject pop. So that's another benefit here. I'm going to bring down the temperature, just introducing a little more coldness this way. And let me bring up the saturation. Let's go with something like this. And again, I want to make this area smoother. So I'm going to use negative texture. And I'm going to use negative sharpness. Beautiful. Let me also add a linear gradient coming in from the top like this. Again, make sure to subtract the subject using an objects mask. In here, I do want to bring in some different colors. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. And let me bring down the tint like that. And let's raise the saturation. Beautiful. And once more, I'm going to bring down the texture. In this area, I can drop it all the way down since the objects mask is working quite well for the top of the bird. I'm also going to bring down the sharpness all the way. And just like that, it looks much, much better. At this point, I think we made the whole image a bit too dark. So I want to introduce a bit of light. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that and I'm going to make it come in from the very top like this. I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And again, I don't want to change the subject. So let's get rid of this. Use an objects mask, draw a rectangle around the subject and that's it. To create this light effect, I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm going to bring up the blacks, which will help to make it look a little more glowing and then let me push the temperature to make the light look a lot warmer. Let me also push the tint in this case. This will help make the light look a bit more orange-ish and of course we can bring up the saturation. That starts to look really really good and again I'm going to use negative texture and negative sharpness to make the background smoother. We can even bring down the dehaze which will improve the glow effect some more like this. Beautiful. I'm going to add another radial gradient right away to make this glow effect a bit stronger. I'm going to make this one smaller though to get a more natural effect. And again, I'm going to bring down the dehaze and let's bring up the blacks and whites. 
All right, nice. Then I also want to change the subject. Therefore, let's use a simple objects mask and draw a rectangle around the subject. What I want to do is to bring up the saturation because I want this bird to look really, really colorful. I really like this. Might not be natural, but I don't care. Let me duplicate the subject mask. I'm going to right click, duplicate mask. And let's reset the saturation slider. With this mask, I want to target the top of its head. So I'm going to click on the mask, go to subject and choose linear gradient. Now I want to make the top part a little bit brighter so the light effect becomes more convincing. With this selection, I'm going to bring up the exposure. And let me bring up the whites a bit just to add a hint of light on top of its head. I think I also want to target its belly. So I'm using another objects mask to target the subject. Then we need to modify this mask. I'm going to subject a linear gradient, taking out pretty much all of the right side. And I'm going to subject a linear gradient, taking out the top. So we're only left with the front of its belly like this. In here, again, I'm simply going to raise the exposure just to make it a bit brighter and give it a little more depth. All right, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Let me deactivate all the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. And pay close attention to the background, how now it's looking a lot better and smoother. I hope this will be helpful for you, but now let's continue with a bit of color grading. Let's start in the color mixer. I'm going through this real quick. It's nothing special, something I do for most of my images. Bring down the yellow hue. And I'm going to bring down the green hue, which will mostly affect the background, making it look a bit warmer. I'm also going to bring up the aqua hue again, just for the background like this. All right, that's looking great. Now let's go into the saturation tab. I want to bring up orange. I want to bring up the yellow tones. And maybe let's reduce the blue tones because they are a bit too strong at this point. All right, nice. Then I want to do a bit of split toning and again for the highlights, as always, I'm going to use warm highlights. So set up the hue with a warm color tone and boost the saturation to make this effect visible. Okay, that's nice. For the midtones and for the shadows, I'm going to use a cold color tone. Let's use a little less saturation though to keep it more subtle. Okay, let's do the same for the shadows. Bring up the saturation. Perfect. And of course, one more thing, I want to go down into the calibration tab and just bring down the blue brummer hue a bit and raise the saturation. All right, that's looking awesome. Now the final thing, we want to do some sharpening in the details panel. Let's bring down the radius all the way while increasing the details all the way up. Then let's apply some masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely target the subject like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And there we have the final image. So I hope this masking technique will be of use for your images. If this was helpful for you, make sure to leave a like, maybe even subscribe or leave a comment. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and see you all next time.